Hello everyone and welcome back to another a Masi chess game by Gary Kasparov who had the black pieces in this chess game a chess game from 1981 from the USSR chess championship and his opponent in this chess game is Vladimir Tukmakov who was an Ukrainian chess grandmaster he became a chess grandmaster in 1972 so this is one of the notable chess games of Gary Kasparov Kasparov, a highly interactive chess game. So let's see what happened. And Tukmakov, who has the white pieces, starts the game with pushing the d-pawn, d4, knight to f6. And Gary Kasparov is playing the king's Indian defense. So this is the typical king's Indian defense, d6. And one of the favorite defenses of Gary Kasparov. So bishop to e2, and Kasparov castled bishop to g5 developing the bishop and Kasparov played c5 which is one of the typical moves so d5 let me show you what happens if capturing the pawn then can you see what happens not capturing back uh, not capturing back and exchanging the queens actually queen to a5 is a pretty pleasant position for black so threatening knight takes the knight is pinned and if you take so being uh, after being after not paying too much attention if capturing the pawn then capturing the bishop and actually uh, this is simply losing so the bishop is hanging as well and putting pressure on the knight okay so this was one of the idea in the king's indian defense so we have d5 pushing the pawn and developing pushing the pawn by Gary Kasparov b5 so another very aggressive move by Gary Kasparov in the beginning of the game we have c takes on b5 so you might ask what happens if knight takes on b5 then knight takes on e4 of course and also targeting the b pawn and attacking the bishop so this is a very good position for black so this is why capturing the pawn with the knight is not a good idea so we have c takes on b5 and this is quite a sharp opening by Gary Kasparov and then Kasparov played a6 pushing the pawn and he basically wants to develop a4 pushing the pawn and asking a question bishop goes back bishop to d2 and Kasparov played e6 so the light square bishop has very little function so Kasparov basically wants to open the bishop Capturing and developing the bishop. This bishop is looking pretty active. Developing the knight. And as you can see, Kasparov is a pawn down. A white accepted the pawn sacrifice. But in return, actually, black has a quite active position. A takes on b5. Bishop takes on b5. And then knight to a6. Developing the knight. And finally, Tukmakov castled knight to c7 snapping the bishop off and then after centralizing the rook and capturing the uh, capturing on b5 kasparov wants to open the game he pushed the pawn d5 so accepting the challenge capturing and then knight takes on d5 so maybe you might think okay this is gary kasparov who's playing with the black pieces so maybe black is already not doing uh, so maybe white is not doing uh, very well actually white is quite solid and in the following uh, uh, continuations of this chess game we are going to see something interesting uh, so the game continued so far actually black is doing pretty well rook over centralizing the rooks and rook to c1 targeting the c pawn bishop to f5 why do you think white can't capture the c pawn because the knight is under attack it is that simple <laughs> so knight to c6 is Gary Kasparov going to lose one more pawn because if capturing one more pawn actually we can say that white is going to have two connected pass pawns in the outside so that doesn't look very safe for black it looks quite risky well Kasparov played queen to d7 attacking the knight but simply capturing the pawn with defending the knight and it doesn't look very good it doesn't look very attractive as you can see for black uh, because actually white has two connected pass pawns the a pawn and also the b pawn can roll 
Geri Kasparov played Rook takes, on e1, Queen takes, on e1, Bishop takes was also a possibility, but we see Queen takes on e1, and then targeting the Queen, after defending the Queen and supporting the Knight for two times, Kasparov played Knight to b6, Kasparov is targeting the a-pawn, so defending the pawn and now watch this, this chess game is incredible, absolutely amazing, because every move of Gary Kasparov is a threat. So far maybe Tukmakov was so pleased, he was, he had a grim in his face, he was so happy maybe, that's how, I, how I'm imagining Kasparov's opponent, but on the other hand Kasparov was extremely confident and he had the psychological advantage. So watch this, every move is a threat, now attacking the bishop, defending the bishop and attacking the knight. But then Kasparov played bishop to e4. What a move, what a move. Can you see the purpose of this move? Why Kasparov played bishop to e4? So can you see the idea behind this move? Well, Tukmakov saw the threat of course and he played knight to e5. He was not a chess passer, he was not a chess hustler, he was basically a chess grandmaster, so this was defending everything. And actually right now, believe it or not, but white is very solid, white has two extra pawns, and white is defending everything. So can you see why Gary Kasparov is actually sacrificing the knight? Can you see the idea? If bishop takes on b6, this was the idea of Gary Kasparov, queen basically to g4 and how to defend the checkmate threat well basically if pushing the pawn simply queen takes on g2 checkmate both the bishop and also the rook is looking menacing and targeting the king and threatening checkmate so if pushing the pawn it's not hard to imagine that queen to f3 is just simply losing and white is going to get checkmated so how to defend in this position Actually, believe it or not, but this is the only defense. Black is sacrificing a piece, but now black has a menacing attack. Can you see the best move in this position for black? Actually, if you say to rook to e1, that's also a fine move. That's also a winning move because the queen is pinned and also threatening checkmate. That's double threat. But bishop takes on g2 is even more crushing. And if capturing the bishop, then rook to e1 is checkmate. The queen is pinned, can't go back. So interesting, so this is why Gary Kasparov played bishop to e4. And this was also a threat. Defending the threat, as we know. And queen to e7, another threat, attacking the knight. So knight he goes back. Attacking the rook, defending, and in this position Kasparov can capture the knight. And also attacking this knight and also it looks like the back rank of white is little bit tender so that doesn't look very safe and in this position we see capturing the knight bishop takes on b6 so basically vladimir tukmakov has two extra pieces he's a piece up and he has two extra pawns connected past pawns so this doesn't look very safe but kasparov played bishop takes on e5 of course he is not a piece down. Queen to e3 happened. Well, actually, in this position, uh, you can see that every move of Kasparov in this chess game for the past 10 moves or something was a threat. And in this position, uh, he is attacking the knight with the bishop. And if defending the knight in this position, then rook to a1 is a losing move for white because the queen is going to be pinned. And if defending with the rook, I think bishop to d3 is also looking very good. So once Kasparov, in one of his books, he said that when you trade your opponent's pieces for 10 times, when you attack your opponent's pieces for 10 times, in the 11th time, he is going to make a blunder. <laughs> That's what he said. And he also said that this chess game is actually the perfect example of that, of that quote of Gary Kasparov. So Vladimir Tukmakov in this position, he took his breath and he played queen to e3 and actually this was a blunder. 
well actually staying uh, at the back rank was better defending like this was better and if bishop takes knight can you see what white can play here then checking the king and where is the king queen after moving the king capturing the bishop liberating the bishop and capturing the bishop so in this position this was an epic blunder by Vladimir Tukmakov can you see why this move was a blunder let me give you a few seconds if you want you can also pause the video let me tell you this Gary Kasparov played the move and Tukmakov resigned Kasparov played queen takes on c5 what a move and after this position Tukmakov resigned because of this continuation capturing the queen and then bank and basically white is getting checkmated at the back rank and if not capturing the queen basically white is a rook down and that's all over and at the same time threatening back rank checkmate and defending is not so easy so what do you think about this chess game i think this was a fantastic chess game by Gary Kasparov so that's it. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed watching this chess game. Kasparov uh, proves his statement uh, with this chess game. Actually, he he made tons of threats in this chess game. And he said that, again, when you threat your opponent's pieces, when you attack your opponent's pieces for 10 times in the 11th time, he is going to blunder a piece. <laughs> and this is exactly what happened. Kasparov said this chess game is the perfect example. So, okay. Uh, so... I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.